This is the 80s show on iHeartRadio. Uh huh. Funkhauser feels sick. I think there's a lot of that going around. It's that change of the season thing. It's kind of tough to stay on top of. I don't know. There's probably sciencey explanations for it. Barometric pressure, different flora and or fauna. But one thing I know for sure. While everything else is speculative, people bring their snot-nosed kids to work and that makes you ill. Like, you can actually see the crusted up mucus underneath their nose. It's just like, come on, I thought you were a decent human being. Then you brought your little Petri dish. You let the germ off of the slide, brought it to the office, and you didn't even bother to clean it up so we could go, oh, what an adorable little kid. No, no, you left that glistening crackling mucus residue all over the kid's upper lip so we could see just what a festering cesspool of sick he was waiting to happen. Thanks a lot! Bring your kids to work day. That happened to you, right, Funkhauser? Yeah, people have been sneezing all over the microphone. Terrible. Oh, that's not good. What a lot of people don't realize, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pull back the curtains again here. <laughs> I'll pull back the curtains again and we'll discuss uh, life in a radio station. And part of it, part of what goes on in a radio station is, well, think about how close you allow your mouth to get to things that other people's mouths have been near. Think about that for a second. Yeah. Do you share forks and knives and utensils and things of that nature with people? No, no, you don't. And while you don't put a microphone in your mouth, if you are... <laughs> If you are attending work with a sick person, or maybe maybe the person was just sick in the head and allowed their annoying little Petri dish of a kid to get on the mic and take a picture and pretend they were on the radio too, like Dada. Detestable behavior, by the way, especially if you're a germaphobe but like me. But understand that when you're using the same microphone that everybody else in the building has been using, <clears throat> that's essentially like having access to a community condom. It is not good times. I think uh, one day, one day I will get to a point in my career where I at no stage in the game have to go into work. I don't have to share studio space or community condom microphones with other people and I'll be a lot more happy when I can do my radio from a hermetically sealed bubble. It's funny though. It's funny because if you look at, if you look at great radio folks, uh, Howard Stern springs to mind. He uh, he's a he's a noted germaphobe, and I think that goes around. Like Funkhauser, you've spent your entire professional life in the uh, in the radio industry. Would you say you've run into a disproportionately large amount of germaphobes uh, after working in radio? Yeah, most of them have you know that uh, what's that stuff that hand sanitizer. Like uh-huh. height hidden somewhere on them or near them so that they can squeeze it all over themselves after they meet anybody or come an inch from anybody. There's a giant Costco size industrial tub of that stuff yeah, in there's most one radio in here studios. Too. Yeah, in, in most radio studios that I've been into. And the one place where it falls down is that you cannot slather that all over the microphone or it breaks. But yeah, everybody seems to be a bit of a germaphobe in radio. Like that hand sanitizer stuff that started with like, I would, you know, put a little on my fingertips and rub it in. And then I started putting it on the back of my hands as well as the front of my hands and uh, getting my palms. And, you know, and then it started working its way up my arm a little bit to where like I did the first part of my forearm, like the wrist as well. You know, like, why not? I wipe my eyes with this part of my body and then all of a sudden like I'm rolling up my sleeves and dabbing it under my armpits and it's like it's an addictive thing the sense of cleanliness that you get from hand sanitizer but what's interesting about this germaphobe radio world that we live in where everyone's so paranoid about uh, getting germs and passing them on to each other is the hypocritical behavior that hides behind it these same 
people that are going to douse their body in hand sanitizer are also the ones that bring their snot encrusted kids to work and let them get on the community condom microphone. And that's just not okay. And these people are also people like the germaphobes. Oh, don't give me sick. I'm going to look away. I won't even look at you. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be on the other side of the building. Can we get the engineering to rig something up so we don't even have to be in the same room when we do our show together? That would be great because I'm that much of a germaphobe. This is the same person that probably ate Twinkies for breakfast and has a flirtatious uh, relationship with cardio. Like their cardio is the time when they actually take the stairs up instead of the elevator, which I, I've started doing, by the way. I'm not taking the stairs. I, I take the elevator because, you know, um, lazy yet paranoid about germs. So I'm just as bad as everyone else. You know who I'm not as bad as? Islamic hackers, although they did something that I can kind of get behind. What is it? We'll talk about that a little later on in the show. Also, if you've listened to this show for a while, then feel free to join in the conversation. Maybe you feel differently, but I don't think you do. We're not a theocracy. We're kind of, well, yeah, this country has a lot of founding beliefs. Some that, I don't know, could have evolved with the times a little bit more than they have. But uh, one thing that I kind of stand by is that we're we're not a theocracy. Uh, I think a, a, an America that manages to separate church and state will be a more successful America. I think if you separate church and state, you're going to be able to hold your state and your church that much more accountable. But that's not happening at the moment, to the point where our military has to go to court to defend their right to not believe in a specific God. What are we talking about? We'll get there in a little bit. Plus, President Michael Moore. <laughs> well, ah, see what I did there? That was a Freudian slip. I, I don't think for a moment that would happen or that would be a good idea. <laughs> but Michael Moore has said uh, something about Barack Obama's presidency that have people on the left ready to skewer him. What is it? We'll discuss. not a theocracy at least you know not in name yet for some reason a man who's willing to lay down his life for our freedom fighting our military is having to go to court to defend his belief that we are not a theocracy and not be forced into religious behaviors that don't jive well with his personal sensibilities. Seems crazy, right? Plus, Michael Moore has gone on the record saying the only memorable thing about Barack Obama's presidency is that he was black. Yep. Michael Moore, ladies and gentlemen. It sounds interesting. I have some theories about this one, and we'll get into that later. Right now, though, if uh, if he is able-bodied enough, given the wave of sick that seems to be uh, ready to overtake the studios in which he works, Funkhauser, we know how you are, feeling unwell, but what is going on in the world? Hey, wait, hold on. Are you doing anything to prevent the spread of sick? Like, are you taking anything, doubling up on vitamin C, or doing any of those things that are purported to help you when you have something coming on? Well, I, I just felt it this morning. So, so far, two cups of coffee and plan, oh. plans for orange juice in the future. That'll work, I hope. Is there enough vitamin C in orange juice to make a difference to your health? Uh... uh it is. It helps me. It makes me feel better. I don't know. I drink a lot you, of it, uh, though. Oh, you, I, can you drink that stuff? What, vi- well, orange juice. Yeah. Not, not straight up vitamin C. Some people take those vitamin C supplement things, and uh, I can't get behind that. I just think, you know, if you, I just got to stay kind of normal, and uh, I like to ignore the fact that I am sick as long as possible, because uh, I think... The more you let your body just take care of it for you, the healthier you are in time, I think. Do you ever uh, find that your body just sort of is in touch with your 
personal work habits and situation. Like, have you ever had that thing where you're driving home and maybe you got a 20 minute drive home and you start to feel like, "Mm, I need to pee. And you want to pass up the McDonald's and you want to pass up the, uh, the other roadside conveniences that might have a necessarium in them. Because you feel like you can make it home. And you're doing just fine. You're doing just fine. You're not in any way, shape, or form having an emergency. But the moment you hit that driveway, the, uh, the inner bladder pressure that you start to feel is significantly elevated. And then by the time you get to the door, you're struggling with the keys and you're fidgeting. You're like, oh my God, I haven't done this since I was 11. I actually might mess myself on the doorstep. You ever have that? It's almost like your body knows. Your body is aware of the fact that, okay, been holding it for a while. We get to go soon. We're home. D- do you ever get that? Does that happen to you? Or is yeah, that just me? Yeah, but you know, lately, uh, it hasn't been number one. And lately, <laughs> it has struck me on my way to this job here. Oh. About six in the morning. <laughs> Gotta go. Well, do you have coffee before leaving the house? No, I don't. It's uh, maybe that brings it on like midway through. But man, uh, didn't you say that since you started cohabiting? Didn't you say that since you started cohabiting, you've uh, let your eating habits go to hell, and you've been eating cereal for a late night snack almost every single night? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the it. fiber pushing on through the next day, my friend. That's what I think. First but thing I in the morning, think... it's like, hello. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, here's the thing. I also believe that with getting sick, the way your bladder knows, oh, we get to pee soon, therefore I'm going to make this an urgent thing. I've held it the entire, the entire car ride. I, I think your body knows that about sickness. Like, if you're starting to get sick on a Tuesday and you feel like you've got it at bay... And you'll probably get through most of Friday, but for some reason, by the time you walk through your front door on a Friday night after wrapping up work, all you'll be able to do is drag yourself into your bed and be like, the person I cohabit with, can you bring me some chicken soup and a hot compress for my head? I think that's what's going to happen. If you don't if you don't beat it before the end of the week, it's going to wait, lie in wait. You're going to think, maybe I'm going to have some fun this weekend. Maybe I'll go out. Maybe I'll do something. Maybe I'll get some of the things done around the house that i got to do. And nope, you're going to be knocked on your ass by the one-two punch of sick the moment I'm you step through your own front that. door. I'm not hearing you. <laughs> don't listen to that, body. Yeah, it's, it's sad, but it's true. All right, what's going on in the world? Well... Apple had a big thing yesterday. They unveiled their newest product yesterday, the Apple Watch. Right, the Apple Watch. It's perfect for everyone who wants to check what time they can eagerly line up for the next overly hyped Apple product while sadly wondering if they'll ever have any actual friends. Uh, the Apple Watch, by the way, not too different from uh, other smart watches that have come out in the past. It's one noted the one thing it can do that other smart watches couldn't um, make people sit on a urine-soaked pavement for hours while they wait to overpay for one. It's only nine hundred dollars. Mm. Oh, and by the way, if you perked up at the news that Apple are unveiling their newest product, the Apple Watch, <laughs> congratulations on being white. Here's your pumpkin spice latte and your Mumford and Sons record. What else? Well, Apple also unveiled the iPhone six yesterday. Yeah. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but if you don't buy it, the Chinese toddler who built it will have soldered his thumb off for nothing. <laughs> and I hear the terrorists win if you don't. Yeah. Oh, oh by the way, uh, guys, if you are ordering an Apple Watch, it, it, well, for guys who order the Apple Watch, it's great because you're going to be able to see what time you're not getting laid. Continue. The Price is Right is searching for a new spokesmodel, which uh, they're looking for a dude this time. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about this. Little uh, little man candy for, for the ladies watching The Price is Right. How long has The Price is Right been going? Long time. At least it's like 20 years. And they, they don't have any male spokesmodels? No, I don't think so. This is a new thing? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen. <laughs> you've any. come a long, you've come a long way, baby. Uh, anyways, they're looking for a male spokesmodel, someone telegenic, someone eloquent and experienced, giving free stuff to undeserving Americans. So, uh, President Obama, when he gets out of office, eh, 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 see what I did there. <clears throat> it's funny because he's redistributing the wealth. What else? Yeah. Uh, Lena Dunham honored Joan Rivers by posting a plastic surgery joke. Yeah, and then she resumed uh, turning all men gay by posting yet another naked photo of herself. Do you, uh, you know what's interesting about Lena Dunham? You know who her boyfriend is? 
Mm-mm. Mm-mm. This dude, uh, Jack Antonoff. Oh, uh, he's in a band. Yeah, he used to be in Fun, and now he's got his own thing. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's sort of all right. It's not bad. But he's in Fun. He's got his own thing, and uh, he dates Lena Dunham. You know what? You know what's interesting? You know, uh, you know, you know who he was seeing naked before he saw Lena Dunham naked? Like the rest of the country has no. 